Good afternoon. It's, uh, it's on? Okay, very good. The environment that surrounds animals matters importantly. We know that. Animals adapt to their environment to survive. Adaptation helps organisms to survive in their ecological niches and habitats. Their DNA has adapted and anatomically, behaviorally, and psychological adaptation has occurred, which allows them to survive in such harsh environments where we as humans have a hard time to survive. The emperor penguin is the only penguin species that breeds during the Antarctic winter, where air temperature is nearly minus 40 degrees centigrade, and the wind speed can be up to 144 kilometers per hour. The species has adapted in several ways to counteract heat loss. Feathers provide 80 to 90 percent of its insulation, and it has a layer of subdermal fat which may be up to three centimeters thick before breeding. Similarly, we know that camels, which live in the deserts, have adapted to their harsh desert environment and developed red blood cells which are oval rather than circular in shape. This is to accommodate osmotic variations due to the high variation in water intake that takes place in, in deserts. We also know that their humps are reservoirs of fatty tissue to minimize the insulating effect fat would have if it were distributed over the rest of their bodies, helping camels to survive in hot climates. So similarly, as nature's environment conditions animals' adaptation, firm environments conditions firms' adaptation for survival, firm adapt to their harsh environment and find ways to survive and make profits. The environment that firms adapt to is constituted by regulation of firms, regulation of industry and regulation of markets. The market itself is also a constitutive element of firm environments. In market exchange takes place between parties, customers and business. So market operates in various ways in industries, meaning that exchange conditions are specific for different goods and service markets. The third constitutive element of firm environment is the industry itself. It specifics ways of organizing the value chain from raw material materials to its final products and services. The fourth element, the firm environment in, in the firm environment is technology, which again conditions how the market operates and how the industry is organized. So together, these four constitutive elements of firm environments affect competitive preconditions in the environment, including the sources for competitive advantage. So competition is a key element in firm environments. So the firm environment then impacts how business is done in specific industries. So the business model and how they organize the firms. This means that it defines the key resources as processes that are valuable in a business environment. Also the customer value proposition as well as cost structures and margins are defined due to firm environment conditions. And also, firm environment impacts the competitive strategies by firms. So the competitive strategies, such as organizing of firm for gaining competitive advantage, having different kinds of strategies, such as cost leadership, differentiation, and focus strategies, and the control of resources and capabilities that are rare in specific uh, industry settings, valuable, non-substitutable, and difficult to imitate. Recently, also, competitive strategies by firm are changing, so, such as control of relationships are becoming more and more important with digital technologies 
including business e ecosystems and platforms. Also, generation of network effects become important in current digital environments with multi-sided platforms and platform ecosystems. So by now, I outline the key elements for firm environments and their impact on how firms do business and how firms strategize. So one element of firm environment that I have left out from the previous models is social institutions of industries. Social in institutions of industries conditions firms and their strategies. This constitutive element of firm environment is a sub subjective one in comparison to the previous ones that were more objective elements of industry environments. Social institutions or industries are the rules, norms and cultural cognitive models, so how we make sense. They become taken for granted beliefs about the industry, about the business, about markets, about technology, customers, products and services and even competition. So firm practices and managers' reasoning becomes embedded. They become inertial in industry social institutions. And this creates what I call the baby stroller effect. This is my first daughter, Alice Marie, 12 years ago, sitting in a baby stroller in a village in Switzerland. Before my first child, I had not seen many baby strollers on the street. When I got her, I started to see baby strollers on the street. And by the time we had our second child, I had been able to distinguish several types of baby strollers and several types of colors I could also distinguish. By the time we had the third child, I was an expert on baby strollers and the streets were full of baby strollers. But by the time my third child moved out from the baby stroller, the baby strollers disappeared from the streets. They were not there anymore. There were only a few ones. So my inference is that what happened during this time when I had three babies and children is that there was a baby boom. And after that, there has been little children born. So what this tells us is that culture, community, language and convention define how we see the environment that surrounds us. Also the firms interpret the environment in the same way and how it is changing. So strategic thinking operates through our brain. It is our brain that goes through and processes this information that comes out from the environment, goes through the outer cortex of rational thinking, and then through the subjective and selective thinking part of our brain. And out comes strategic thinking. So what happens when we have a very disruptive technology that changes substantially the market, a new technology, a new type of industry operation, competition, competitive advantages, changes. So new technologies disrupt, disrupts how business is done and competitive strategies. What then emerges is an ambiguous firm environment. In the picture, I have the Valmet Dawn electric vehicle. This vehicle is only a prototype. It doesn't exist yet. But the context is unclear here. It is ambiguous. How do the firms attract commitment to such ventures, for example, building an electric vehicle or building charging stations for electric vehicles? And how do they sustain this commitment? 
how do they sell something that isn't not there yet in the market? We also know that when there is an ambiguous firm environment, the stories of what this is all about, they diverge, diverge across organizations. So this puzzle has been my research emphasis over the last 12, 14 years. And I will go through a couple of studies we've been conducting regarding ambitious, ambiguous firm environments and soft power strategies in these. Firstly, in terms of the perhaps more objective view of what is taking place in a firm environment, in an ambiguous firm environment. So what we found out is that engineers that analyze what is possible and what can be achieved do it in different ways by analyzing patent data, data, databases. So what we find is that there is a realm of expectation. We have a lot of patents in the realm of expectation. These are situations when there is a already established technique and you are envisioning or building a product or a prototype or an innovation to become a, a, a product. You are envisioning that product. But there are also anticipations, wild cars, big risk, big return type of activities by engineers, which are built on leaps from promising techniques that we might have, that can be there if, if possible, to promising products or visionary products even. Then moving into the subjective view. So this is the subjective view of managers and how they legitimate their ventures in ambiguous firm environment and the role of stories. With uh, my research colleagues, we analyzed the electric vehicle market during its emergence since 2012 to 2015 in real time meaning that we interviewed managers between 2012 and 2013, talking with them about what electric vehicles are all about and what type of strategy they are taking to make their products come to the market. We did this study in Finland and California. We did a lot of interviews, but we also collected presentations up to 112 public presentations. And we did a lot of other type of data gathering. Uh, and finally, we focused on six established automotive companies, three startup electric vehicle manufacturers, and two electric vehicle charging ventures. So what we find when they talk about and tell stories about what this industry is about and what their venture is about, is that large companies, established companies like Toyota, Ford, General Motors, they say that electric vehicles are, are the next step in vehicle production. Sounds natural. Tesla, for example, says something else. This is about innovation in batteries and energy which can be applied to any product. So these actors, the established firms and the newcomers in the industry, are telling different stories about the industry. So the existing established firms contextualize their business within the existing automotive industry. They talk about small steps that the industry is going to take, and it's going to be a long-term adaptation that is going to happen with electric vehicles. And we are not going to see surprises here. 
the newcomers, again, contextualize their business totally within a new electric vehicle field. And they say that this is a radical disruption in the firm environment. In their stories, they tell about the capabilities that the manufacturer has or the capabilities that the startup have and portray those to the radical or non-radical disruption in the firm environment story that they tell. So what they are trying to, to construct is stories to legitimate their venture in relation to those that might be interested to fund them or pursue further in that industry. Another study we did was to analyze how industries emerge and what are the phases of industry emergence over a longer period of time. So in this study, we recognized three stages of industry emergence, a pre-emergence stage, emer an emergence stage, and a post-emergence stage. So in the pre-emergence stage, there is a disruption, disruption in the existing industrial order. And in the emergence stage, there is development of the four elements of a firm environment. Technology, market, the activity network, meaning the industry value chain uh, actors, and uh, those that are participating in building up industry activities. And finally, the industry identity in itself, as what this is all about and what kind of industry this is. Over time, these elements converge, and there is a consolidation and a new industry formed. So in these industry settings, we have been recently also studying how regulation and asymmetric regulation might impact firm strategizing. So asymmetric regulation means that not every firm is regulated in the same way as other firms in the market. And this takes place oftentimes with new technologies entering, especially with digital technologies. We can see that, for example, in the taxi industry, how taxi operators are regulated and how Uber has been able to go around regulation and develop new kind of business models that are not regulated in the same way as previously. This creates asymmetric regulation. The other thing that is taking place when industry environments are disrupted is that there develops oftentimes unbalanced competitive preconditions, meaning that some firms have much more favorable resources to their usage than other firms. This creates restrictions and challenges for managers to operate their firms, what is called also managerial discretion, which then again triggers corporate political strategizing, meaning that the firm managers actively engage in influencing regulation in an industry. So this study that we have been working on with two of my doctoral students is about the telecom sector from 1981 to 1998. It is about the Posti and Tele Laitos, the State Department that develops into Sonera Corporation, a listed company that emphasizes shareholder value and a liberalized market for telecommunication business. So deregulation, competition, development and technological change is taking place in this environment. 
The unique th thing we have been working on with this data set is that we have been able to digitize all the management and board minute meetings from 18 years of this organization, which means that we are having 764 top management meeting minutes and attachments that we can analyze, and additional uh, documents in terms of regulation. What we are doing with such a vast amount of data is we are coding the data into a relational database creating relations between the sources, incidents, organizations, and individuals. This allows us to much better understand strategic activities over time in ambiguous firm environment. I want to end this lecture with a short note on digital disruption and firm environment. So, metaphorically, what di digital technologies are now currently uh, uh, doing to our firm environments is that they are moving them into what I would say more ecosystem type firm environments. So these ecosystem environments, in these environments there are open digital platforms and platform ecosystem and this is the firm environment that firms are needing to adapt to in this current situation. So goals with my research to conclude is to advance understanding about ambiguous firm, env firm environments. It's to increase insight and expand understanding to strategy, tactics and policy in ambiguous firm environment. I believe that this insight helps firms to navigate, shape and even construct social institutions, what I call soft power strategies, in ways to facilitate take up of novel technology-based business. Finally, I think that this type of research is able to provide direction for how to speed up take up of new technologies and the development of markets that provide solutions to quality of life, sustainability and climate change mitigation grand challenges. I thank you for your attention.